Hey guys, it's your girl Nadge. I'm here today for another video. Thank you for joining my channel. I've been a little bit sick, so if I sound a little sniffly, I'm sorry. It's not the big C, it's just a cold. Um, I wanted to get on here today and talk a little bit about Kate and William. Um, so I have to preface this with saying that my first video about Megan and Harry has gotten a lot of traction. I mean, I don't have very many followers, but um, that video in particular has like five times, ten times more views than any of my other videos. And um, I wasn't really expecting that. And so um, basically all I've been doing this whole time is, is essentially telling my truth, discussing how I feel um, a sense of um, empathy for Harry and Meghan and what they've gone through. And I feel like many people of color, many women, um, disabled people, plenty of people who have probably gone through oppression in their life, probably in some way have um, a connection to the story. And I want to say that works on both ends. Even the people who are anti-Harry and Meghan and pro-Harry and Meghan, I think that people who have been oppressed really really are taking a liking to the story and I don't I don't pay I don't I don't totally trash you know Harry and Meghan haters I, I don't just pull them down unless they come with vitriol unless they come with um insults and things you can you can basically disagree with someone without insulting them and, and I feel like that's the weight of this political world that we live in right now and so the way that I sort of got into this, because I haven't just been uh, sitting at my desk, and I'm going to get to Kate and William in a bit. I haven't just been sitting at my desk for years studying Harry and Meghan, thinking, oh, this is exactly what's going to be my life's work. I'm just going to like spend my life trying to support Harry and Meghan. I knew pretty much the same as everyone else, like very surface of what was going on. Um, and then I saw how much hate they were getting online. I saw that they were good people. I saw that they were humanitarians. I saw that they just basically were two people who were fairly normal and even better than that, who were admirable, who committed themselves to service and people just were jumping on them. And that's how I came into this. But prior to that, and as I've said, I've said in many other videos, I'm very, very transparent about saying that I actually support the monarchy. Like, I am an Anglophile. I love English literature. I love a lot of English shows. I have a high respect for a lot of English people that I know personally. Um, and they are monarchists. And it's okay. You know, I feel like it is okay. I can be black and support the monarchy. I can be black and a woman and support Harry and Meghan. You know, I just feel like we live in such a polarized world where it's like, you either go this way or you go that way and you're out. And I just hate that. Um... But basically, a lot of my um, fascination, I would say, with the monarchy, not everything that it's done, because clearly, because of colonization, you know, the world is a different place right now. And so, yes, slavery existed, and we've been through a lot of stuff. People have died. People have been hurt. You know, those were my ancestors who were on those boats. So I wouldn't just be blindly saying I support the monarchy. But, guys, the issue is, is that, if we were to just tear down every single institution that was built on slavery, we would have nothing left. Literally, nothing. So I don't think it's just as cut as dry saying, oh, you know, they were racist towards Harry and Meghan. Let's just get rid of the monarchy altogether. You know, I think that that's a very idealistic way to look at things because since, you know, for, for, for a thousand years, for roughly a thousand years, you know, there has been acceptance of the king's secession. And if you don't know about that, go and Google it. There's been acceptance of the king's secession in England, okay? And if they were to just completely rip that out, it, 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 it would really, really um, damage the fabric, I believe, of everything that England is and everything that it will be because it is so deeply ingrained in there. And so I think people are a little naive going in saying, oh, they wronged Harry and Meghan and they should be out. No, I don't necessarily think that. But at the same time, I can recognize, you know, 
um, that other people have difference of opinions and I feel like we should be able to have our difference of opinions and at the end of the day just take a chill pill okay it's okay take a chill pill <laughs> so like um there was this one troll who basically you know and I'm not I'm not even gonna call her a troll because seemed like a nice enough person hates Megan you know hates Harry and Megan and think that they're narcissists and think that they think that they're the big I am as you guys would say in the UK and um she came into my my channel and basically I don't know if English is her first language because there was a lot of grammatical errors and things in her comments but um the basis of what I was getting from her was her saying that she thinks that Megan is a narcissist and that um you know uh there's blatant examples of her being a narcissist and that the Sussex squad and the pro Harry and Meghan people need to stop gaslighting um the anti Harry and Meghan people and she she basically said I'm going to go back to the Pedina uh which Pedina is a YouTuber another YouTuber who has a much bigger channel than me I really don't want to put myself in the same ballpark as these people because I'm not this is just a channel where I get to talk about the things that I care about you know it's just an out it's, it's an outlet for me to just discuss what's on my mind and hopefully I can help someone here and there or hopefully people you know might find some resonance with things that I say I this this never has been a channel for monetization it's never been a channel singularly focused towards Harry and Meghan and it never will be um, because I can't just sit here and focus on just that but there are channels like P. Dina and um, um, Le Le Leilani of Bar 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 blah, 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 I can't talk <laughs> Leilani of Barbados um, uh, there's a few others that are slipping my mind right now there's Nate the lawyer that comes off the top of my head um, there's like a Brian guy I can't think of it but anyway Obviously, you all see them. There are people out there. There's the Duchess of Narciss, Nar Narcissus. I don't, I, don't, I don't even know. And this claim that Megan is a narcissist is just beyond me. But in this video, I want to shift a little bit and talk a little bit less about Harry and Megan because you guys know my stance on that. I support them. I think they're great. You guys know my stance on the monarchy. I think that they have done atrocious things. I think that they need to acknowledge that racism is very alive and well in the UK. Something needs to be done about it. I think the monarchy needs to be transformed, like it needs to be reformed in its interactions with the media. Um, all for that. But I think that to just rip out the monarchy, to just say, oh, we're going to rip out the monarchy from the UK and the Commonwealth, I don't think it's as simple as that. If that is something that needs to be done, okay, but it's, it's going to be progressive and it's going to take time. The advantages of the monarchy I, I can't really speak to Kate and William without speaking about the advantages of the monarchy which I do think they exist so for me there's some fairly simple things that's not really much to think about it's a rich cultural history you know there was a reason why the crown was so successful there's a reason why we look at so much of that there is a reason why half of my favorite books as a child were fairy tale stories um based off of princes and prince princesses and and castles and things like that there is a deep cultural history that is interwoven within that and i think that as someone who lived in britain um british people aren't just gonna like let that go very easily because you know a prince decided to marry a mixed race american actress it would be very naive for, of us to think that um and i think Harry and megan themselves look at the monarchy also as a rich cultural token. I think that when, when Meghan first came into the royal family, she was really excited about it. Um, other advantages, I think that it does add to the economy. I mean, clearly there are tourist dollars and things that come towards the monarchy. Um, I think that it's also a guiding sense of camaraderie and fraternity for British people. Um, not all British people, clearly. Um, but I think for many people, it is, uh, of all different colors, all different backgrounds, all different socioeconomic statuses, that is something that has been a, 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 um, a, a standing variable, you know, it's just, it's always been there and arguably it may always be there. And so people of all different backgrounds can sort of connect over this thing. 
Um, you even hear about people like uh, Kahimde Andrews, I think is his name. He speaks about um, how his grandparents or his grandmother was a part of the Windrush generation and how although, you know, Britain had let her down in his opinion because um, the Windrush generation, they never really got any thanks for all of the, the, the help that they sort of get, gave to the economy, helping build up the British infrastructure. These are people who were brought over from, you know, the islands and things like that. Um, from Jamaica and Haiti or Barbados or whatever, and then sort of just discarded. Um, oh, take Haiti out of that. I think Haiti was actually colonized by France. <laughs> but um, basically, he, he was saying, Kahinde Andrews was saying that his grandmother was a black woman and she was highly, highly devoted to the queen. She was highly devoted to the monarchy. So I say that to say that, and Kahinde Andrews, is like obviously very against the the monarchies basically we can see that you know people of all different races different generations different socioeconomic backgrounds can have different views on this they could be anti-monarchist monarchists they could be monarchists they could be um pro black lives matter they could be anti-black lives matter they could be for climate change they could be against climate change you know like basically i feel like there are very many different opinions many of them valid and um, we have to learn to live with that and so I have to say this you know other advantages of the monarchy is um, I feel like the monarchy actually does play a very important political role in the his in the past it also has played a, an important political role the issue is that we live in a changing cultural landscape and so Today, it's not as cut and dry as it seems. And so we see, you know, members of the, the, the royal family going to uh, on service missions. We see them donating to charities. We see them holding charity functions and things like that. And so there is this humanitarian aspect of the monarchy as well. Now, um... Like I said, I support the monarchy staying. I don't support the, the racism and harassment that Harry and Meghan have received, you know. And I stand by that. I don't really care about trolls telling me one way or another how I'm wrong, how I'm right, how I'm an idiot. You know, if you really are resolved in something and you believe in something, you don't, I mean, people telling you that you're an idiot or telling you that you're wrong really shouldn't phase you very much. So... Um, the trolls don't phase me very much. Um, okay, so I have to be pretty honest with you. I don't like the channels like Leilani of Barbados or P. Dina because it so clearly looks to me like a monetization of speaking ill on these people's names, you know. It, and there are influencers that I do like, like Tisa Tells, like the Royal Sussex Family TV, um, and, uh, Claudia Boleyn, I really follow those channels, I really love them, um, they, well, for Success Family Squad TV, that's the exception, because that almost works as a news channel, where it's only information about the Success Squad, so I feel like that is good, if you're only gonna do news, you know, or what you define as news or commentary pieces about Harry and Meghan, Go ahead and name your channel like, I don't know, Megan Hate Club or whatever, you know, but that's not what P. Dina and Leilani of Barbados are doing, you know, they are, you know, their whole feed is about Meghan Markle. You see that they have a lot of traction from followers and then, um, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult to be unbiased on that. Where I sort of get slipped up and I cannot support it, you know, the, the, the ethics and my moral compass cannot allow me to support channels like Leilani of Barbados or Pedina because what they are doing is so, so dangerous. Um, to me, they are basically, as someone, I wish I could remember who said it because I love it, they are being the white or, uh, I'm sorry, they are being the black, brown, minority, ethnic, etc. face of white racism. And so that's to say, you know, and a lot of people say that about Candace Owens as well, which I'm going to make a video on Candace Owens. Um, a lot of people say that 
because manifest destiny is a real thing. You know, the secession of kings is a real thing. The white race has held so much power in, you know, humanity since the beginning of time. And, and my husband's white. So, you know, like, I, I'm speaking literally from a factual historical standpoint, you know, not what I think, nothing like that. But we can say that the white race of all of the races has held the most power, you know, that I think that we could say at least in the past thousand years. We can pretty much clearly see that. And so, um, something that you find often is gaslighting and whitewashing of people who express concerns about racism, about prejudice, about bigotry. Many times they are silenced, okay? And oftentimes it's not directly. Oftentimes, just like with the Sky Newses and the Piers Morgans and all of that stuff, they say, oh, we don't hate Megan because she's, she's mixed race. We don't hate her because of that. No, not at all. They say, we don't like her because she put her hands in her pocket. We don't like her because she's always holding Harry's hand. We don't like her because she emails the staff at 5 o'clock in the morning. You know, th those are the things that racism, bigotry, prejudice does in a very insidious, you know, low-key way that makes a scapegoat question their sanity that makes them question well maybe I really did do something wrong and so these channels like Leilani of Barbados like P. Dina um, to me they are basically just you know limbs functioning by the puppet master who what that is you know the system and I, and I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist here because I am far from it, you know. I'm not going on all night searching Illuminati conspiracies and things like that. But we can clearly say that because of colonization and just hateful ass people, the majority of power has been held in the hands of white people for at least the past thousand years. And a, and a way that that has happened many times it's through silencing, through gaslighting, um, through targeted hate campaigns, exactly like they're doing to Harry and Meghan. And so when you have people of color, it, it makes those people out there with really bad intentions, the really bad racist people, say, oh, see, we have here someone of color saying it. So my delusions must really, really be true, must really be clear. And let's not mistake it. It's not delusions to say that all of the hate towards Harry and Meghan, it's, I mean, it's delusion. Like, it's, 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 it's not about hands in pockets. It's not about her holding his hand. It's not about her doing too many interviews. It's not about the way she dresses. We know that it's because she is the different and they don't like the different. At least those you know, very far right, extreme, polarized people. And so that's basically the way I came into to this. I didn't come into this to start making a bunch of Harry and Meghan videos all the time. Don't get too excited because you won't get these all the time. This is my channel about my journey. But I do feel like I have to come to these people's defense. And I think most people who claim themselves as being on Sucks Squad, on um, you know, coming to, to their defense, have the same feeling. They see two people who are just being completely wronged and there is a, an inherent human need within, within us to, to help these people. And it should be. If, if we were operating in an empathetic society, that would be the, the case across the board, but clearly it's not. So, um, <clears throat> I'm looking at my computer. I watched a video um, from NBC. It was from two years ago, and it talked about um, Karens, explaining what Karens really are and expressing how they're actually very dangerous. Now, why am I talking about Karens? I have to preface this to say that I don't think that only white women are Karens. You know, that just would be ridiculous. This um, epitome of this character of the Karen of course, I think it's mostly associated with middle-aged white women because a Karen is someone who uses their privilege, 
you know, to basically just be a huge pain in the butt, you know. And they don't realize that they're coming across as racist, they're coming across as vitriolic, that they're coming across as prejudiced, but they're just trying to defend whatever their rights are. And it's a, I think it's a very similar mentality to the um, sort of dude, at least in the U.S., who drives the pickup truck with the bald eagle and, and you know, says white power and, and, and this is America, go back to your country if you don't like it. You know, I think that the Karen is really the embodiment of a female version of that. And so um, it's basically what you don't want to be. It's like, uh, and, and it's, it, it makes sense also that they're usually older women, they're middle-aged women. Um, and so they do come from a generation that is a little bit different. Um, maybe society wasn't as integrated. Uh, there wasn't as much social justice and equality. And so they really do feel like they hold a right to something. So um, I'm going to tie this all together to Kate and William. Now, um, why are Karen so dangerous is because they don't recognize that for the fight of dismantling white supremacy, you know, uh, they, they give an example of a woman who calls the police on a nine-year-old black boy who's selling water in, in their neighborhood. She calls the police on them, okay? Um, I think an example is, um, what was her name? The woman who passed away at the, at the, the rioting of the Capitol. Uh, her mother, and I'm so sorry that I'm slipping on her name. Her mother basically tried to take a stance and was walking in the middle of the street and the police pulled her over and she started giving the waterworks and crying, which sympathy for her. I, I feel bad that she lost her daughter, even though we know that her daughter put herself in that situation. You know, she put herself in that predicament that got her killed. Um, I do feel sympathy for that, but, you know, that's another example of someone using their privilege. And it's so sad because I feel these people aren't very emotionally intelligent. And, say, and so they don't really see what they're doing wrong. They don't see how it all adds up. Now, hold that for a second. Hold the Karen uh, video. The reason that is dangerous, I, I hope I elaborated on that well enough. The reason why it's dangerous is because it perpetuates prejudice. It perpetuates racism, perpetuates classism, and it's, you know, it causes people, especially many people of color, situations that bring up a lot of ancestral trauma. Um, and they don't really help us to live in a better, more integrated world where we don't judge people based on the color of their skin. Because at the end of the day, that's usually what, what's happening in these situations, like with the neighbor with the little boy who was selling the water. I doubt she would have done the same thing if it was a white little boy. So that's the point. Um, now, there was a video by the YouTuber Jenny O. Jenny O recently, about two weeks ago, posted a video um, showing a TikToker who was basically saying, oh, uh, Megan loves attention so much. Where's Megan now? You know, and there's, of course, been so much chatter about this in the Sucks Squad videos. You know, people don't like her when she's there. They don't like her when she's not there, uh, you know. And, and when she finally takes a back seat, they're all asking where she's at. And so Ginny O basically goes through a compilation of TikTok videos of people responding to this woman saying, oh, Where's narcissistic Megan at? And these people just totally drag her for filth. Now, I feel a certain type of way about TikTok. I think that it is definitely a hub for a lot of vitriol. <laughs> and just a lot of, as my dad would have said when he was alive, DS or dumb stuff. Um, so it's not really my preferred platform. But I, it can get out of hand, you know, but I do think that it's really funny and people open themselves up for this. You, you got to be prepared. If you're going to open yourself up for ridicule, uh, you got to be prepared for the consequences. And so, um, yeah, that's basically what I'm going to preface this video talking about Kate about. Now, Kate and William. As I've said earlier in this video... I support the monarchy. I, I mean, I don't love it. I don't love what they've done recently, but I love the the regalness of it. I love the rich history of it, and I love that they support humanitarian causes. Those would be the reasons um, why I'm I'm fighting 
or not, I'm not really fighting. I'm not fighting for it. It's not my country. But those would be the reasons why I would say I am in support of the monarchy staying, okay? Although we have to preface with, with saying they need to do the social justice work to bring themselves up with the standards of today, okay? Living in a multicultural world. With that being said, I don't have an inherent problem with Kate. Unlike, you know, who the YouTuber I love, Tisa Tells, she's 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 really funny because she's really always talking about how like Camilla, Queen Camilla is like uh, a horse. <laughs> she calls her cow Milla. She talks about how she's nibbling on oats and stuff. And she's a long running joke. And it's really funny, you know, even though I, you know, support the monarchy and I'm not against it. Even I can laugh at that. Um, she says that you know, Kate is always making these random expressions, which she does, um, you know, and it, it, it looks like she's, you know, smelled some old milk almost, you know, and so Tisa tells she'll talk about that a lot, and um, while I won't do that because there is a certain level of, um, what do I want to say, there is a certain level of unbiased sort of coverage if you will but this is not a news channel this is really just my commentary there's a certain there there's a certain level of tactfulness and and be trying to be unbiased because we're all biased at the end but there's a certain level of tactfulness and trying to be unbiased that i want to um achieve and if i'm looking at this you know with my background in education especially since i've kind of always fallen in the sorry my eyes all like leaky I've always fallen in the sort of spectrum of centrist, which people have a lot to say about centrist, but um, I don't necessarily always swing right or left, even though it sounds like a sexual reference, I'm sorry. Um, I, I don't necessarily consider myself Republican, Democratic, Tory, Labor, whatever. Um, I usually like to hear both sides and then I pick and choose basically what I agree with. And I will defend being a centrist to the end of the day, whatever. Um, but even if you're not a centrist, even if you're a Democrat, you're a Tory, you're a Republican, whatever, um, there's a level of diplomacy that you can have. There's a level of respect for fellow human beings that you can have. And I feel like we have just exited that. So with Kate, I basically see Kate as someone who seems very familiar to me, you know, like her life and... I'm not going to say her whole life. This is this is someone who's going to be a future monarch. So, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, I saw her grow up, basically, I, through TV. Not, you know, through eyewitness. But I saw her go through her university years. I saw her party. You know, I saw her get her heart broken by the man she would eventually marry. I saw them rekindle their romance and fall in love again and, and have children. I've seen her, you know, do service and, and things like that. And so I basically ultimately don't have a huge problem with her in that regard. The, the, the problem that I have with Kate is that she has basically marked herself as a Karen in her dealing with Megan, in her dealing with this situation with Harry and Megan. And, um... The reason she's marked herself as a Karen is because in this day and age, and, and maybe this is this is a discussion, there was a wonderful commentary with Rod Stewart. Um, is his name Rod Stewart? That sounds like a singer. <laughs> um, one of the, the night nighttime shows. But basically he did a panel discussion talking about um, why it's important for white people to acknowledge their white privilege and to help dismantle racism. And so basically, um, I, I took a lot from that. And we live in this day and age where um, you either have to truly be on the side of dismantling white, white, race, white supremacy or you set yourself on the side of someone who doesn't really care too much about it. And so I want to be proud of Kate and Will. Like, they're going to be the next monarchs. I don't see the monarchy being overturned before they actually take the crown. I don't see that, to be honest. And I don't necessarily see two horrible people. I see two imperfect and faulted people. Um, 
and two people who really, you know, one of the biggest, one of the biggest issues I think with people not being able to understand uh, empathetically racism, how it works, systemic racism, the people who can't really wrap their head around it, I've said this in another video, I think it really points to their lack of exposure to multiculturalism. I think it points to the fact that they aren't very close with people from different backgrounds because if they were, it just wouldn't be the same case. And so with Kate and William, they had that chance with Meghan Markle and they basically gaslit her and pushed her into a corner. Um, they made her feel like the other. And I think at some point Kate has felt like the other in that family. So I'm very disappointed that she did that. And I think that it's redeemable. Um, I think that William's pro So I basically, and that's basically to say, I think that Kate risks becoming a Karen. You know, she, she basically put herself in the situation with Megan of being a Karen, you know, of being someone who seems like they're not emotionally intelligent and it seems like they didn't really grow up or um, surround themselves with people of different backgrounds. And so in their adulthood, basically, they have a, a disability that is prejudice, okay? With William, I think that he has anger issues. And so other than that, William doesn't seem absolutely like a horrible person to me either. You know, just like Harry and Meghan don't seem like horrible people to me. Everybody has faults. Um, but William, he needs to confront his anger. I mean, he tussled and, and pushed his brother down, and rattled down with him and, and made, made him cut his back on a dog bowl. I mean, he's got to deal with his anger issues. And I think that William and Kate just need to open up a little bit more. You know, they need to continue to fight for their tradition. I get it. They're the next in line. But I think they also need to open themselves up and show that they are, um, two humanitarians, two people committed to service, committed to social justice um, in a very real way. And I don't think that just going to a homeless shelter and bringing your camera crew, put, you know, smiling and stuff, I don't think that that's going far enough. So that's all I got today, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. Like and subscribe. Click the bell.